Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to tackle one of the buggies from the Speed Freaks kit, but this works for anything, okay? I've mentioned this before, and this video is kind of a companion piece to the uh, biker that I just painted, because using all the same techniques as I did in that video, I'm going to tackle a much bigger kit. Now I want to point out that this is going to be a little bit glossed over in some places. I'm not going to go right into the nitty gritty of everything. And you can see that in some areas, you know, it's a little, it's a little dirty, but hey, I like that for orcs. I think it suits the look. So without mucking around too much, oh, I love this kit so much. <laughs> Let's get into how we paint them. Now, when it comes time to assemble your buggy, there are some of them where it's going to say you can leave a piece off. So for example, this gunner here, he clips into the top and he can rotate freely during games, which is kind of cool. You know, he's got a 360 line of sight. That's neat. But there is a lot of detail in these kits where <laughs> it's a little difficult to get to them if you put the lid on. So don't glue it. All I've done is assembled this, you know, exactly as the instructions would say, but I've just not glued this bit on yet. Now for these buggies, this is actually quite easy. You'll have to have a look at the instruction set and how the other ones go together, you know, whether or not this would work for you. But what we'll do is we're going to get straight into exactly how we paint the bikes. So we're going to get some lead belcher first of all, and let's go in and start painting all the metal bits. There's a lot of these. Now I've got here one of the Citadel large base brushes, and I quite like this for the fact that it's got that little chiseled edge, which is going to help me get to some of the areas of detail. All I'm going to do now is just cruise in and paint in any metal. Anywhere that I don't want to be metal, if I do hit it with this, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but for the most part, try and stick to, you know, only metal areas for now. So engine cowlings, the engine itself, so on. All you need to do is fill in these metal areas. This will be probably <laughs> the longest part of painting the whole buggy. So take your time and get into all of these metal bits. Now this looks a right mess, <laughs> but as with always, you know, we're going to tidy up a little as we go and the finished product will look much nicer. Trust me. What I've got now is some Balthazar gold and a slightly smaller brush. And I'm just going to pick out a few areas that I want to be this brassy color. Now, in some areas you're going to find, let's get a look here. There's these little bolted on plates, which are prime candidates for this. But as much or as little of this as you like, get in now and start filling in you know, just a few little bits to make things look a little more interesting. Now we're starting to cook with gas. <laughs> this doesn't look pretty good. Now as well, don't forget that all of these are going to apply to your gunner as well. Don't forget him. So now that I've got a few little bits of visual interest on the model, we're going to bring all of those metal areas together with a dry brush of Necron Compound. Now I've just got one of my soft, you know, cheapy brushes here. And I'm just going to go over the whole model very lightly. It, ooh, I'll hit the camera a few times as well. Now it doesn't matter if you catch... Uh, the wheels, if you catch any of the metal you've already done. All we're looking to do here is introduce just a little bit of texture. And because so much of this model is already, you know, battered metal and what have you, you'll find that this is a pretty good, this is a pretty good choice. So be generous with this. Go around and just dry brush. Well, I might be a little too generous there. <laughs> dry brush the whole model. Now as well, if there's anywhere that you've missed, like for example, this Grot's gun, what I can do is just pass over it a few times. There we go, shiny metal. I don't have to go back and base coat that with anything else. Now with that quite heavy dry brush of Necron Compound done, we can get into the fun bits. I've got a medium layer brush equivalent and some Warg flesh. And all I'm gonna do is just paint in the orcs. Now these guys got a lot of cool cybernetics and stuff like that, so take your time when you get near to any, you know, chunky bits on the arms. The grots, meanwhile, just base coat them in wag flesh as well for the time being. You'll probably find that in some areas you're going to want to go back over for a second coat of this, but you can decide if it looks, you know, good enough. Now, Warboss Green is going to be our highlight color for the Orc skin. But in the case of the Gretchen, they are a little bit lighter, so get yourself some of that. A little bit of water in your brush like always, and just base coat the grots lighter. If you do need to do a second thin coat of this, don't worry too much. 
Now what we'll do is, ironically, a bit of a tidy up. Just anywhere that you want to make sure that you haven't missed any areas. So I'm going to blacken the Grot's trousers, for example. Then I'm going to check out any of the bionic bits on the, on the driver and the like. Make sure that those are all shiny and metal. Just any minor details that you want to be a little bit tidier, you can fill those in now. Now what I've got is my three colors that I'm just going to use to fill in some areas. So Xandri Dust is going to be any teeth and horns and stuff like that. Corn Red just to fill in uh, small bits of fabric, you know, maybe tying off things. Um, I might paint one of the Grot's trousers in Corn Red. And then Rekarth Flesh for any, you know, fabric, cords, maybe the Grot's teeth. But whatever you need to use, you can have a play around with these. See what you think looks cool. I'm just going to use these three to get some jobs done. So now I've done a few cables, teeth, uh, these little bits of fabric and what have you. These have all been done in just a few random colors to help break up the shape a little bit and introduce us a little more to the color scheme. Okay, nice and simple. You see these little bits here and there. It's easy, really easy. What we'll do now though is we're going to gently pop this back on the top. We don't need to glue it down yet because we're going to keep using some paint and we're going to use my fist on red here. And same as always, I'm going to strongly suggest that you make yourself one of these little stippling brushes. Okay, just get an old brush, clip the end off the end of it, and away you go. You know, you've got a flat surface that will splay out when you start jabbing some of fist on red on there. So what I'm going to do now is carefully in some places, like inevitably, I am going to end up going on some of the metal, but we can touch that up. Just jam this on leaving little random raggedy edges in some places. Now, because we are using this straight from the pot, all right, vile heresy upon heresies, you'll find you probably only need to do one coat of this in most places. If you're still not too confident having that on, you can leave it off for now, do it on these edges, and then pop it back on. Okay, so all you need to do now is all of the bits that are going to be red, Take your time. You want to be quite careful with this, really, despite how we're uh, <laughs> just mashing it on. Let's try not to go any of the metal bits that we've already painted. Now, how tidy you're going to want to be with your red is up to you. I've gone, you know, quite close to the edges of these little spike bits. The only bits I'm going to tidy up are on the engine and these little teethy bits at the front here. It's up to you how much of this you want to tidy up. Like, I have made a couple of mistakes here and there, but... That's just the nature of how this paint goes on. You know, we are deliberately being messy with it. And then anywhere we want to fix, we can come back to that. So I'm going to do just a couple of little bits with some lead belcher. Um, I was lucky enough, nothing else went awry. And then we'll move on to the next stages. Now, once you're confident all of your base coats are ready to rock and roll, grab the biggest brush that you want to use. <laughs> and we're going to go Agrax of the Shade over the whole model. This might take a little bit. You want to make sure that you are working it into all of the recesses because we really don't want to miss any of that detail. So take your time now. And you see I'm not being terribly careful at first for that first pass. Agrax Earth Shade. Everything. Now I've given that almost a full hour to dry. And you'll see there's still a couple of little areas <laughs> in the way there that are still wet. But not to worry. We can get on with finishing the rest of this off. What we'll do now is we'll just do some edging on the metal. Obviously that's gone quite dark because we've hit it with, you know, a shade. But what we'll do is we'll get some Necron compound again, and just very lightly along the edges of things, uh, up on the top of things, as much of this as you fancy, just to brighten up that metal again. It probably helps if I do it without my hand in the way of the camera. <laughs> but around you go. Pick what you want to shine and Necron compound it. Now with a few of those metal bits brought up, and remember that you have got the gunner on the top there too, <laughs> you can grab yourself some Kindle Flame and we're going to very lightly do the edges of the red areas. Anywhere that you're a little worried, you know, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to overdo it, don't worry too much. This red generally comes out pretty cool to begin with. We're just going to pick a few areas we can get a little bit more depth of that color. So as always, this is up to you how much of this you want to have on. 
I recommend be pretty sparing with it at first because this will very quickly overpower some of those red areas. Now remember along this seam here, we're actually going to have the roof sitting on top, so you don't want to dry brush that join, otherwise it'll look unnatural when we go ahead and put the, uh, the lid back on. Now what I'm going to do, once my uh, Kindle Flame has dried off, is I'm just going to get a little bit of blood letter, and we're going to do this all over the red. This will help settle in that uh, Kindle Flame, and it'll give us a nice deep richness, richness sorry, to the red as well. Take your time with this, and you'll find you don't need very much. Let's go over all that red again to finish it off. Now while that red is drying, I mean it doesn't take very long, but you can grab yourself your war boss green and we'll go back to that to highlight our orcs. So like always, what you want to do, let's take his, uh, his arm here for example. Just the bigger, broader areas that are going to catch the light and leave those muscly bits in the recesses nice and dark. Now once you've done your orcs and warboss green, they're going to look awfully similar to those weedy wee grots. <laughs> so grab yourself your scar snit green and we'll highlight the grots in the same way. Just pick out a few spots that we want to be brighter and away you go. Now if you're worried that those are still too close together, what you can do, grab some Lamenta's yellow and just glaze the grot's skin. It will not look like much going on, but as it dries, you'll get this really rich, cartoony green come out of it. And then some Bealtan green to do the same thing to the orcs. Now with the differences in the skin finished off and any of those highlights done, there's actually nothing else we have to do on the inside of the buggy. So what I'm going to do is grab here, I keep wanting to call it the lid, <laughs> the roof, and just there's six little contact points I'm just going to put a little bit of super glue on each of those and then pop it back on top of the buggy. Now obviously depending on which buggy you're building you might find you don't have to do this or it might go on slightly differently. That of course is up to which kit you're building. So let's carefully push that together nice and firm. There we go. Then at last with those horns highlighted, same with any teeth or anything that you want to brighten up a bit, and popped on his base, our buggy is complete. And you see the power of context to make all those little things just come together at last. These are not difficult. <laughs> if you want to spend a bit more time, you can fill in the wheels or you could dry brush them with, a, with an earthy sort of colour to make them look a bit dusty, but that's up to you. As far as getting this blokey on the table ready to go and smash stuff. <laughs> I reckon he's ready to go. These are a lot of fun. I love this kit. And like I said, just a little bit of forethought on how you're going to assemble it can really help with those little interior details, which you don't see terribly much of, but you know they're there. So it's nice to, to fill them in. So as always, guys, if you found anything useful, feel free to drop a comment in the old box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.